We are scheduled today for a review permanency planning hearing and hearing on the petition requesting termination of parental rights for both parents. Appearances, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Ariel Berger here as the guardian ad litem for the minor child. Good morning, Your Honor. William Amadeo, P76194 for the department. My worker is to my left. Olivia Wazor, classroom care case manager and a center for children. Michael McFarland, attorney for Ms. Mejia Perez, mother, who is currently outside the courthouse. She had requested that I call an ambulance, Your Honor. Uh, I can explain it for the detail in the Let's let Mr. Brooks put his uh, parents on and then we'll come back to you. Michael, <coughs> excuse me, Michael Brooks, I represent Father Ron Webb. Your Honor, my client has a closed head injury history. She also has a mental health history. Today, when I was explaining to her what was going on, uh, she appeared to have a breakdown, came into the courtroom, had an episode I, I called contact at the bail about that. She requested and from myself and the bailiff and ambulance be called to transport her to Hickman Hospital as she would like to uh, be evaluated. Uh, it was definitely not her normal self as I know her, Your Honor. I do know that Mr. Burke's client is with her, wanting to accompany her in the ambulance. So I have a motion to adjourn when it's appropriate. I think this is probably your, a, a good time for that. It does, I just want to review for the record that I have proof of service for the petition and the summons on both parents at 135 East Main Street in Morenci on January 20th, 2023 uh, at five o'clock, 507 and 508 respectively, uh, indicating that both parents were served a copy of the petition in a timely manner by personal service more than 14 days ahead of time. And of course, <clears throat> as is typical, uh, the court report and attachments seven days ahead of time by you. I have proof of service to that as well. <clears throat> Reflecting the last known email address for both parents without any indication that that comes uh, back. Your position on the adjournment request, Mr. Amadeo. Uh, Your Honor, I'll, I'll take no position. I'll leave it to the discretion of the court. The one thing I did mention Mr. McFarland in the hallway is I don't know if his client needs a competency evaluation based upon the outburst today. If that is the case, it might be for her own mental health. I think it would further our position. But as far as the adjournment goes itself, I'll just leave it to your discretion. Mr. Brooks? Uh, I have no objection to this. Ms. Berger? Uh, yes, thank you, Judge. I would object to that today. Um, pursuant to 712A.171, the court shall adjourn a hearing or grant a continuance regarding a case only for good cause and with factual findings placed on the record, not solely upon stipulation of counsel or for the convenience of a party. Um, at this point, Your Honor, mother did show up. She appeared. Um, it seems that she isn't in agreement with what is happening. She's been through this before, and I think that she thinks that this is some sort of tactic to uh, stall the termination of her rights. Um, but at this time, I would object to that. This child has been in care far too long. Um, she deserves permanency. Her placement is doing great with her, and um, they need that permanency in order to even move forward with things like early on and some medical care because it delays those things, having to wait for the agency to fill out those papers. Your Honor, in response, I would say as an officer of the court, as my personal testimony from what I saw, I can also, and I'm prepared to call the worker and anybody else here in the courtroom as to what they observed in her irrational behavior, Your Honor. Well, um, <clears throat> now would be your opportunity to do that. So you gotta please. call the worker then, Your Honor, please. Okay, uh, so Ms. Rezor. Is that the same Yes. All right. Come on up. Mr. Zorik, uh, you were here approximately 10 minutes ago when my client had disturbance in the courtroom, correct? Correct. Can you describe in detail her actions and what you observed? She barged in through those doors. She went right to her husband, Mr. Webb, and said that, or I should say she screamed um, that her sister is adopting Journey. Um, 
She then picked up her coat and left those doors to my recollection. Okay. Are you aware uh, through this case that my client does have a close head injury arising from close head injury arising from an accident? Yes. Are you also aware that she does have a history of community mental health? Yes. And she also has a community health worker. Yes. And then she has been evaluated on previous occasions by uh, CMH. She has not done that substance abuse assessment or that evaluation. That was court ordered. She has refused. I wasn't talking about substance abuse. I'm just saying a mental. She has a worker through CMH. Well, put that way. Is that true? Not to my recollection. Okay. Thank you. Nothing for the room. Any questions, counselors? No. Uh, ready for the hour. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning. You've been working this case for a while? I think I got the case probably about November. Okay. And Nicole is the mother, correct? Correct. Have you seen any behavior like this in the past? Not to that extent. No. Okay. Did you hear her actually scream today? Court's canceled. I'm going to the emergency room. Yes. Okay. What was your viewpoint on that? She has stated to me prior to that she would go to the emergency room. She's just never done so until today. She's made it known that she would like to go to the emergency room. Okay. While this is just an adjournment question, is her current placement in court today? Yes. Okay. Based on what you sold today, your history in this case, is the child better with the current placement than what you sold today for Ms. Perez? Yes. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Berger? No, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Uh, did she appear to be um, actively psychotic? Not to my knowledge. Did she appear or make any indication of homicidal or suicidal behavior? No. Okay. Then the hospital's not going to take her out. <clears throat> She's better off going to CMH if she would like some kind of mental health assessment or assistance, but thank you. Any questions based on my questions? Your Honor, just in response to that, I don't know whether it may be the closed head injury that might be provoking this, so they may very well see her just to let the court know because of that history. I hope they do. Make the best for her. All right. Thank you for your testimony. You may return to your seat. Anything else before I make my decision, Mr. McRonald? Well, if the court does rule that they're going to proceed, I can attempt to recover my client, Mr. Burke's client, if he wants to also. They're waiting in the front of our building for an ambulance. I would ask for a brief adjournment if that is the court's decision. All right. Well, uh, the court's decision is uh, to deny the motion to adjourn. Uh, we're going to commence our proceedings. I am relying on uh, not only the findings of Ms. Berger, but also the testimony of our caseworker. Uh, that this particular parent uh, is reacting to what's being requested today, uh, but she's had prior notice of that, uh, and she has had an opportunity in the past uh, for mental health evaluation and substance abuse disorder uh, evaluation. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I agree with Ms. Berger that it's just a little bit too convenient that uh, just now is when she's finally decided to go and seek assistance. Uh, we will have uh, probably an opportunity for uh, a recess in a little bit. I do know that there's been a request to have a juvenile detained, but I don't think they're here yet. So. Uh, Your Honor, I have no objection. The court to start without me. I would like to at least let my client have the opportunity to be present because I think she has a right to. Um, Your Honor, just for appellate purposes, if he's going to go get as a client to attempt to bring him in, I don't think we should start till we know if he can bring her back or not. I could just see the Court of Appeals saying, oh, well, you didn't do something right. If she's going to be here, let's proceed. If she's not, that's fine. But let's make sure we're on the same page. And that's what Mr. Farr wants to do. I don't want to start without him present. No more than five minutes, Your Honor. Your Honor, I uh, spoke to security. My client was not there, nor Mr. Brooks' client. Uh, they advised myself and the bailiff that the ambulance had taken them, presuming to take them to the hospital. Thank you for your efforts. <laughs> And I hope she's able to uh, get some services. All right. Uh, for purposes of today's hearing, uh, we are having to be consolidated with the termination trial, um, especially in light of a part of the request from the department to look at termination under section CI, which asks the court to, or CII, which asks the court to evaluate whether or not there's been sufficient progress under the case services plan <clears throat> in the in, in at least 182 days of a parent being subject to the jurisdiction of the court and required to make those efforts under case services plan. 
So we've been taking judicial notice of all of the prior hearings in support of that evaluation. Proceeding with review, largely uh, avoiding the repetition of um, any information that was previously entered in the prior. Yes, the act is the Okay. So any opening comments by anyone? Be brief, Your Honor. Um, obviously, I changed my preparation based on what happened this morning. While she is not here, nor is the father, I think it's going to be very clear that termination is appropriate and there is a goal change in place. I think the actions of the mother speak volumes today. Gentlemen? No. I know my client, in speaking to her prior to court, uh, did not want the right to terminate it. Therefore, I will be uh, sticking around and participating in the trial. Anything uh, by way of opening, Ms. Berger? No, Your Honor, I'll reserve for my closing recommendation. All right. Uh, new witnesses today, Mr. Amadeo? Yes, we'll call Olivia. What's your position? I'm a foster care case manager. Okay. And what has your role been in this case? I have been a foster care case manager. For how long? For about a year. With this case, probably just a couple months. Would it be safe to say of intimate knowledge about this case? Yes. Let's go about that. What's the current permanency goal for the child? Currently, it's reunification. Okay. And has the respondent mother, let's talk about mom first, has she rectified barriers that caused the child to come to your care? No. Okay. Has the re respondent father done so? No. Can you explain what services you offered? A substance abuse assessment, a psychological evaluation with an IQ test, parenting time, parent education. So the substance abuse assessment, is it true that there's at least an allegation that the mother was smoking marijuana during her pregnancy? An allegation, but she has not done the, the excuse me, the assessment. Because Your Honor, I'm objecting. If this is a review, the review is from last review, the current review. So that's way outside the time frame. I'll withdraw that question. Uh, well, we do need to establish whether or not there's been any sufficient progress made on the issues that brought the child into care. So a brief review of those issues is fine. Has the mother completed the substance abuse assessment? No. Would the child, in your opinion, be a substantial risk of return to the parent custody today? Yes. Are you recommending a goal change? Yes. Can you explain what that goal change is? Adoption. Okay. Has there been a change to the child's place during the review period? No. What's the current parenting time plan, of any? Excuse me, can you repeat that? Is there any parenting time plan in place? No, it's been suspended. Okay. Excuse me, uh, would the court instruct the witness to speak up a little? I'm having a hard time hearing her. Okay, thank you. Who's the current placement? The maternal aunt. Nahara complied with everything you've asked of her. Yes. How is the child doing under her care? Very well. She's thriving in that placement. Okay. Has the placement continued to exercise reasonable and prudent care for this child throughout the whole process? Yes. Are there any additional needs this child needs right now that are not being met? No. Anything else you want to highlight at the moment? No. And earlier today, did you see the mother in court? Yes. And what did you witness? <clears throat> she came into the room. Uh, she um, said that she was obviously upset that her aunt, her, excuse me, her sister was adopting and stormed out of the room. Was the respondent father present? Yes. What did he do? He followed her. Based on what you witnessed today, does that change or reinforce your position on termination? Reinforce, reinforces. Thank you. Questions, gentlemen? I do. You are aware that my client has a diagnosed closed head injury, is that correct? Yes. So under the American Disabilities Act, within this last review, what have we done to accommodate her and her disability? Due to ADA compliance, yes. we have read every report to her. She has been asked if she understands what is being read to her, if she has any questions. She has not um, stated anything otherwise. She knew what was happening today. And when was this that you read the report to her? That would be the previous worker. During the summons, uh, she provided the summons to both Mr. Webb and Ms. Mejia Perez, 
read it out loud to them, asked if they had any questions or concerns. Were you present? I was not. You don't know that for a fact, right? It was disclosed by the worker. Okay. Who was the worker? Ms. Rodriguez. And she's present in court. Yes. Right? Okay, thank you. Have either of the parents completed any services in this case? No. And have they been offered several services? Yes. Have they taken the agency up on their offer to help pay for repairs on their vehicle? No. Have they um, attended parenting time in the last several months? No, it was suspended at the last hearing. And prior to that, are you aware? Can you repeat that question? I apologize. Yeah, prior to the suspension. Objecting, objecting, Your Honor, because it was suspended at the last hearing. And now we're getting in, but this is a review right now. So it's from the last review to this review. And we're going beyond that. Ms. Berger, is this for what purpose are we uh, reviewing this for? I'm just um, asking for an overall theme, basically, of this, of this matter. All right. It sounds like the uh, questions are foundational in nature, uh, so I will allow it. Prior to prior to the parenting time being suspended, are you aware if parents were attending visits? Father did not. He was terminated from those services. A mother rarely rarely attended. She often canceled. Okay. And have you observed the minor child with her placement? Yes. And um, what, how would you describe that relationship? They are obviously bonded. She is attached to her caregiver and she's doing extremely well. She's thriving in that placement. And she has some severe medical needs, is that correct? They are being taken care of by the caregiver. And she's- Your, Your Honor, that was not a response to the question. The question was she has severe medical or medical needs and there was not a response to that. You're welcome to cross-examine her. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> yes, sir. Thank you. And her current placement is easily able to meet those needs? Yes. And what are those needs? She participates in OT and PT twice weekly. She has several doctor's appointments that she attends to. She does have a feeding tube that the caregiver has to address and care for. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Can you retract? Briefly, Your Honor. Did you prepare for a report for that? I did. Did you review the initial petition? Yes. Since the last review to now, have you seen a change in the parents at all? They've been doing the same as they have been. Are they able to support this child financially? No. Are they able to provide food, clothing, or shelter? No, not appropriate. And is there any previous CBS history with this family? To my recollection, yes. Ms. Mejia Perez has previous children that were in here. Nothing further, right, Your Honor. I'll move to admit the court report and the petition for the record. Without a client, I take no position, Your Honor. I'll take the same position. No objection. Sure. All right, thank you. I am receiving the court report <clears throat> and it is now part of our record. Uh, has there been any change to the child's need for using a feeding tube? No, she still uses one. Okay. Uh, any other questions, counselors? No. No, thank you. No, Your Honor, thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Mayor Attorney Receipt. Any other witnesses, Mr. Amadeo? Rebecca Rodriguez. Ms. Rodriguez, I'm on for a witness today. What is your role in this matter? I'm the foster care supervisor on this case, and I was the previous worker on the case. How long have you been involved in this case? I've been involved with this case since it came into our agency on November 29th, okay. over a year ago. And can you explain to the court who is Nicole Maya Perez? Nicole Mejia Perez is the mother. Have you ever dealt with her in the past? Yes, I have. Can you explain that to the court? 
I dealt with her in the sense of the worker side of it, uh, offering services to her, referring her to the psychological evaluation, the substance abuse assessment, following ADA compliance, observing parenting time. How was she with those services? Do they help her or not? She hasn't participated in services. Uh, she refuses to do so. She were here earlier. You heard Mr. McFarland and myself about the substance abuse assessment. Did you hear those questions? Yes, I did. Can you explain what a substance abuse assessment is? So a substance abuse assessment is when an individual does an intake to determine whether or not substance abuse outpatient counseling is necessary. It is done as an intake over the phone. It's about a 30 minute conversation with the CMH worker. Um, Ms. Mejia Perez and the father were offered for myself to sit in on those phone calls to assist with it as well as the current worker. Did they complete those? No, they refused to do it. How much time did they have to complete this test? Uh, it was court ordered. Normally, we give them six months is when the referral is good for. We have to redo referrals after that point. Uh, in this case, it's been open well over a year at this point, and they still refuse to participate. So would it be accurate to say that both respondent parents have disregarded court orders? Yes, it would be. Okay. How's the child doing now? I haven't seen Journey since December uh, because I'm not the worker on the case. I saw her at a Christmas party that we had for foster children. Um, with that and conversations and observing her during that time, she is well bonded to the caregiver. She had a really good time playing and if she was frightened at any moment or unsure of herself, she would search out the caregiver for comfort. Based on your involvement during these reviews, do you have any reason to believe the family, the respondent parents are financially able to support this child? No, uh, the father has been reported to work, but he has not provided pay stubs throughout the whole process, even though they've been requested. Do you have any reason to believe that this child who has a feeding tube will be able to be fed properly under the care of the respondent parents? I do not. Is there any of the best interest factors you believe that the respondent parents could provide for this child? Not at this time. What is your recommendation? The recommendation would be to move to a goal of adoption and terminate the parental rights of both parents. And did you witness what happened today? I did. Did you explain to the court your own words what you witnessed? Uh, Mr. McFarland came in to uh, request that his client, he meet with his client. She walked out, he met with her. She stormed back in, uh, got in her husband's face screaming that her effing sister, I'm gonna curse on court, sorry. Um, <laughs> that her sister would be adopting her daughter and court is canceled. And she immediately wanted to go to the emergency room and she stormed out the door. Thank you, nothing further. Russ? Yes. The workers testified that you read the case service plan in compliance with ADA yes, uh, to my client. Is that true? That is true. Is there anything else that you've actively done for ADA compliance with my client? When I met with them in January to serve them the summons and the petition, I reviewed it with them, read it to them thoroughly, asked them, did they have any questions? Did they understand what was going on? She did understand. She was calm when she said she understood. They signed the papers for the current time that they were being presented the papers, and I left the home. Thank you. Nothing further. Ms. Brooks? Do you think my client, I represent Mr. Webb, do you think my client understood it when you explained to him what he was signing? Yes, he did understand. He was asked if he understand, and he verbally stated that he understood. This feeding tube, what, is the what are the mechanics of this device? Okay, so currently Journey has a feeding tube that's inserted through her belly uh, because she's not able to take in oral foods very well. Uh, currently, she's using what's called a gravity bag. The caregiver has to hold it or prop it up for the milk or the formula, special formula, excuse me, that she's on to go through. Uh, she will be receiving an electronic pump that will do that for her. Uh, she has to have that tube or the insert replaced every three months by the nephrologist. I believe it's what it's called. Could be mispronouncing that one. But uh, she has to go to the doctor and they have to replace the tube, make sure it's functioning properly. Is that permanent for the rest of her life? Until she's able to take in oral foods on a regular basis to get the nutrition that she needs. So there's no time frame for this? No, unfortunately, there's no telling. Uh, she could be on it until she's two or three years old. It just depends on when she's able to take in those oral foods. Thank you. Ms. Burke. No questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Any redirect? No, thank you, Judge. Thank you for your testimony. Any return to Heather, can you please tell the court role you're playing right now in the care of this child? Okay, so she gets fed every four hours. 
from her feeding tube. I have to put the formula, special kind of formula she gets. She don't get like baby formula. She gets formula from set from the hospital. It's like a pediasure. She gets fed every four hours. You have to put it in her gravity bag, hang her gravity bag up, then let it drip until it's done. After it's done, you have to flush. You have to flush the tube, make sure the tube that's going into her stomach is flushed good with water because any milk left over could make her sick. Um, she goes OT and PT twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. Her OT is trying, they work with her on oral eating and oral sensitivity. So like anything that goes in her mouth, it's a sensitivity that she doesn't like it in there. So she gags it to get it out. So that's, they've been working with her since January of last year with that. And then her PT, she does it right after OT. And the PT is trying to get her where she's able to like crawl, walk, that kind of stuff. Um, she does crawl, she does sit up. Um, she just recently in January got her braces for her legs and she's actually trying to stand up now. So she's doing the best that she can. Do you have any other children? I do. I oh, have really? four kids. I have a 28 year old. I have a 26 year old. I have a 21 year old and I have a 17 year old. And now I got an 18 month old. <laughs> You ever had any CPS history? No. You have any criminal history? No. Do you feel the need to be a Methodist child? Yes. Do you want to adopt this child? Yes. What's your relationship like with your sister? Um, it's difficult. Um, I wanted to always have a relationship with her. It's the stuff that she does. Like she calls me in the middle of the night, like 11, 12 o'clock, screaming and yelling, leaving me nasty messages. And we just never been able to have a relationship because of the things that she has done to me. Like, I don't want to, um, uh, I, she just gets really nasty with me and I don't wanna get in confliction with her, like today. What happened today? So when she walked in, after the, her lawyer called her outside, she came inside, she was screaming because she was like, um, court's going to be over. Um, my fucking, my effing sister is going to um, take my daughter from me. And I thought, I got a little nervous. I said, I thought she was going to come over there and jump on me. I got like kind of nervous there for a while, but then I was like, okay, she's going to go on out. Her husband's going to get her out of the courthouse courtroom. You testified that Journey has medical needs, correct? Yes. And you're caring for those needs? Yes. During the time that Journey's been in your care, has your sister or husband helped with these medical needs at all? Has two? I'm sorry. Has your sister or her husband helped with their child's medical no. needs at all? Have they helped you financially at all? A little bit at first. When's the last so, time they helped you financially? Um, April of last year. April of last year? Yes. So have they provided any money to you in the last eight months? No. What is your ultimate goal? Adoption. Thank you. Any questions? I do not, Your Honor. What role is Mr. Webb, the child's father, playing? while you've been, the child's been in your care? Um, he's, when, at first he would do some of the visitations and then he just stopped. Like the visitations would go on and he wouldn't be there. And I didn't ask questions cause I don't know, you know, he, Nicole had told me that he was um, tired. He had to work, so he wasn't able to, attend, but he did attend a couple at the beginning. That's all. Thank you. You're yes, welcome. No, okay. Any questions, Ms. Berger? <clears throat> sure, Your Honor. Thank you. Any other witnesses, Mr. Amadeo? No, thank you, Your Honor. Mr. McFarland? Since my client is not present, I have no witnesses, Your Honor. Mr. Brooks? The same, Your Honor. I have no witnesses. Ms. Berger? I have none, Your Honor. Thank you.
Uh, comments uh, in closing. Thank you, Judge. You saw what happened today. Mom is not here. Supposedly she's at the hospital. Dad left. There's been no financial support given to this family. The child has medical needs. The child is doing well under the care of the aunt who has no CPS history, no criminal history, raised four kids. The goal is adoption. The parents' rights should be terminated. We ask for that. Thank you. Gentlemen? Your Honor, without a client to consult, I can only express to the court that my client does not wish to have her rights terminated. Uh, I am reviewing the best interest fact. Well, we're just talking about the review right now, right, Your Honor, or trial combined. Yes, combined. Okay. You know, I did go over the best interest factors. I, I do think those have been covered. Uh, I would like to have had a client here to testify, but in her absence, I have nothing further. Mr. Brooks? I have no client, no other witnesses. I'm sure that Mr. Webb would want me to advocate that he is opposed to having his parental rights terminated. Thank you. Ms. Berger. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. At this time, I am in agreement with the request to terminate parental rights. These parents have not been involved in this child's life in quite some time, and they have never been able to provide any sort of stability that would indicate to us that they would be able to care for a child with such high needs. Um, like you've heard today, she does have a feeding tube. She has braces on her legs to be able to walk. Um, she is speaking a little bit, maybe four or five words, but otherwise is not verbal. Um, they plan to test her um, to see if she is on the autism spectrum as soon as she's old enough to do so. Um, she still has um, sort of an oral sensitive sensitivity um, and gags on food. She'll, uh, she'll suck like flavorings off of things like Cheetos and cookies and stuff like that, but she won't chew, she won't swallow. Um, in addition, the parents here are not bonded to this child at all. They haven't had parenting time in quite some time. Even when they did, father was not actively involved in that. And they, um, I believe- I object, Your Honor, that's not in evidence here that I can recall. He was literally terminated from orchards for not showing up. I withdraw the objection. Thank you. The child is extremely bonded to her current placement. She's been there nearly her entire life. Um, she's bonded to her other children that are in the home and in and out of the home as cousins and sort of, um, you know, older sibling <coughs> relationships with this minor child. Um, she's been in care her entire life. She does need permanency. She's around 18 months old. And I believe she was maybe a couple of months old when she was released to um, her current placement when I first was able to visit with her. Um, at this point, I you know, obviously can't ask the child what she wants because she's not verbal, but this is her home. This is where she's bonded to the people there where she, where she thrives um, as much as she can. She's attempting to pull herself up. She's attempting to walk. Um, she's kind of doing these funny little splits things, which are, you know, placement describes as kind of wobbly trying to stand and she's been able to stand for a couple of seconds at a time. Um, but the likelihood of her being adopted by this placement is extremely high. She's expressed that here today. She's expressed that to me throughout the entire pendency of the case. Um, and at this point, there are no biological siblings um, in care. They've all been adopted already um, through other courts. But this child is bonded to her um, foster siblings at this point or her cousins. And I think that it would be uh, very traumatic to have her move at this point. And I think that the parents have not been able to show that they can provide any sort of stability or support and that they can't um, ratify, ratify rather um, any of the concerns that brought this child into care. Thank you. Well, the court finds, as was reviewed at the outset of our proceedings, that the parents were given uh, appropriate notice for the review permanency planning hearing, as well as the hearing on the petition to terminate parental rights. They were uh, accommodated effectively by Ms. Rodriguez, uh, as she has diligently done so in the past with other uh, review hearings uh, by the reading of the petition to them, as well as the court reports regularly. Uh, there's no question that they uh, had notice of what the expectations were for today. Uh, 
and it is appropriate uh, to continue to proceed uh, given the uh, not only that notice but also the parents uh, lack of engagement as I will further explore uh, in the findings as it relates to the petition for termination of uh, rights. As it relates to the review, there were certainly efforts, diligent efforts made towards the goal of reunification, including some of those that I've mentioned already, detailed in the court report that's part of our uh, record here today. Um, excellent. And so we're very grateful to Ms. Rodriguez for that and to Ms. Ozorek. Um, just for future uh, reference, Ms. Ozorek, we'll look forward to, and I'm sure you'll be able to tackle this um, quickly, uh, DHS 69 notifying everyone that you've taken over services from Ms. Rodriguez so that if there is a need to reach out uh, by, for example, the LGAL or any of the attorneys, then they know who to appropriately reach out to. <coughs> Excuse me. I also find Ms. Berger to be in, in satisfaction of her obligation uh, as guardian ad litem. Thank you uh, for your efforts. Thank you, Judge. So the review <coughs> uh, requirements have been satisfied. That also uh, forms the ground that the court will have to look at to determine whether or not the statutory grounds for termination exist by clearing convincing evidence, specifically as it relates to the statutes uh, MCL of 712A.19B3CI, 3G, and 3J will be evaluated today. Uh, the conclusion <clears throat> of the court will be, uh, for reasons I will further articulate in a moment, that there are uh, clear, there is clear and convincing evidence uh, under these statutes for purposes of uh, termination, and the findings for CI and 3J will be <coughs> the same, in the same sense that there's a reasonable likelihood that based on the conduct or capacity of the child's parents, the child would be harmed if she's returned to the home of the parents. Uh, that's because that, <coughs> that's because both parents have been a respondent in this proceeding, brought under the juvenile code, 182 or more days have elapsed since the issuance of the initial case services plan, the initial disposition order, and the conditions that led to the adjudication continue to exist with no reasonable likelihood that the conditions will be rectified within a reasonable time considering the child's age. Uh, we clearly have unremedied and unmet mental health needs uh, that perhaps uh, contributed to the self-medication that seriously and severely affected this child at the outset of this case. This child was born September 2nd, 2021 positive for morphine, norco, flexerol, and marijuana. Uh, there was evidence at that time that um, the mother had been using uh, marijuana during her, uh, as early as her first trimester. And when she was born uh, in Ann Arbor, <clears throat> she was uh, remained in the hospital as Ms. Berger uh, shared with us. And still to this day uh, has uh, a feeding tube as a result of the significant issues that she had as a result of being born positive for all of those substances, and perhaps as a result of some of the limitations that she may come by on a genetic uh, basis. We were never able to document any of that. There were comments from medical providers and observations made all the way through the case uh, that these parents may have some developmental disabilities, but they never submitted uh, to an evaluation that would have allowed us to specifically explore that particular uh, potential limitation. <clears throat> Nevertheless, uh, there were other um, there were other issues that uh, these parents uh, unfortunately uh, have to take full responsibility for, and regardless of any affection they may have for their child, um, it's certainly the case that uh, the child was born dangerously uh, limited. She went through uh, on as early as nine eight, continued to be I should say agitated, difficult to console with hypertoxicity and shaking, all indications of uh, withdrawals, clearly. <clears throat> At the time of this, the observations of this particular doctor, the mother reported she'd been crying for over an hour and the mother was not able to get up to console her. Her father was sleeping at the bedside. She was taken to the newborn nursery where she was able to be consoled with normalization of her respiratory rate. Uh, parents were uh, unwilling and unable to learn about her limitations and how to meet those limitations in the hospital. And that continued to be a pattern throughout uh, the duration of the case. Uh, as was reviewed, they had limited uh, progress, uh, limited engagement in the uh, parenting education program that was offered to them, and both uh, simply stopped coming and were terminated from that program. Uh, both missed significant numbers of visitations, uh, father more than mother. Mother was offered, both parents were offered uh, the opportunity to uh, engage with active efforts, uh, 
superior efforts with Ms. Rodriguez, offering to sit with them and call in to CMH for substance abuse evaluations, walk them through that process. Um, psychological evaluations were scheduled for both parents on three or four different occasions, uh, and they never accomplished any of those evaluations. So as a result, uh, the mental health issues and the substance abuse issues that were identified at the outset of this case uh, uh, were never able to be analyzed and certainly never remedied. And the lack of engagement with both parents uh, did not allow to establish uh, that these parents were able to meet the basic needs of this child. Housing was not determined to be appropriate. It was The house was refused to even be, the caseworker was refused into the house during the last report period as I read from the court report. <clears throat> Mother is on social security, uh, but other than very limited amounts, has not contributed to the care of the child. Father insists he's working, has not uh, contributed to the care of the child uh, financially, uh, which provides clear and convincing evidence under 19B3G that both of these uh, parents had income, and in this court's discretion, were financially able to provide proper care or custody, or at least support for this child. They had over a year to do that, and there's no reasonable expectation that they would change their behavior from that of the past year, that either of these parents would be able to provide proper care and custody within a reasonable time considering the child's age, income-wise, as well as to avoid dangers associated with uh, the risk of harm <coughs> that this child would be further injured as a result of medical neglect, uh, physical neglect, and physical neglect if returned to these parents. Again, neither parent has learned about the significant uh, special needs of their child in a way that would allow them to perform uh, needs. Mother, both parents uh, continued to smoke, which was a serious and significant risk to the child who had extreme sensitivity to that, even during visits. Uh, this is a, a very high needs child who still to this day has a feeding tube as a result of uh, the trauma accompanying birth. And there's no demonstration whatsoever that the parents have benefited from parent education services <clears throat> or supportive visitation in any way in order to be able to meet those needs. They've simply uh, disengaged from services completely in at least the last six months. So there's no question that uh, these parents have had 182 days. On uh, July 1st, 2022, the dispositional order was entered as to the respondent parents in which they were court ordered into the case service plan for many of the things that I've already articulated. We had reviews in September and then also in December and today. And uh, as I've noted, we've had uh, some engagement early on uh, by both parents. Father uh, disengaged rather quickly and mother has uh, certainly disengaged at the last uh, report period, if not the last two report periods. So there have been 182 or more days that have elapsed since the issuance of that initial dispositional order, and the conditions that led to the adjudication continue to exist. There's no reasonable likelihood that the conditions would be rectified within a reasonable time considering the child's age. <clears throat> I've seen no remedy or even analysis for substance abuse, uh, mental health issues, uh, no accomplishment of suitable housing, employment, or uh, parenting skills necessary to provide uh, for this child. So clearly, there would be a significant risk of harm to her if she were to be returned to the home of these parents at this time. So there's clear and convincing evidence that's been established under those uh, three aspects of the statute. Under the best interest factors, <clears throat> uh, the court has to look at whether or not there's a preponderance of the evidence established that it's in the best interest of this child to terminate the parental rights of both of the parents. At the time of the filing of the petition, the child was 15 months old, in, in care uh, as quickly as less than a month after she was born, again, positive for morphine, Norco, Flexerol, and marijuana. High needs child uh, in this relative caregiver has been meeting her needs, as she described, uh, lovingly from the bench, or from the witness stand, I should say, to the bench and has diligently uh, attended to those needs every four hours since this child was released to her care. Something that uh, the parents uh, were not able or willing to accomplish even during parenting time. 
the lack of visitation and engagement in the parenting services education program that involved uh, parenting visits also uh, led to a uh, deterioration of the bond between this child and parents. Uh, the, the parents had the opportunity to bond with the child as early on is in the hospital and declined to do that. Uh, indicating they were too tired to, as a review, too tired to uh, pick up the crying child, even at the hospital, uh, and then didn't show any diligence around visitation or forming that bond or meeting the needs of the child, which would strengthen that bond as well. <clears throat> I've already addressed the fact that their parenting ability um, is not anywhere close to where it would need to be in order to meet this child's basic needs. Uh, and that uh, foster home has significant advantages over the parents' home. They've had uh, little to no compliance with the case services plan. The child is doing well where she's at and has <clears throat> the opportunity uh, to be adopted into that home. And that should be uh, something that we should offer to her. She deserves and needs a permanency and stability. She's very young, uh, needs to continue working on her developmental milestones in a home that's safe, secure, and able to meet her needs. She's had uh, the opportunity to, uh, her mother especially, mother and father with this caregiver being a relative have potentially had the opportunity for uh, increased contact with this child, entertainment of an alternative uh, goal if she had been engaged. But as was expressed by your sister, um, even though that opportunity was there, the mother particularly has actively squandered that opportunity <clears throat> by focusing on uh, negative interactions with the caregiver and destroyed any opportunity to take advantage of that relative caregiver status uh, to extend uh, additional contact or time and efforts. And so despite that relative caregiver placement, I do find uh, for that reason, as well as uh, the rest of the reasons I've already articulated, it is in the best interest of this child to terminate the parental rights of both parents. Trini's been in care for uh, at least 15 out of 22 months, which is the entirety of her life, and she needs permits. We are also supported in that finding by our LGAL and two caseworkers. <clears throat> so for all those reasons, uh, the parental rights of Ron Webb and Nicole Mejia Perez are terminated. <clears throat> As of today, there will be no further efforts required towards the goal of reunification or to prevent removal. The goal for the child will be adoption, and I will look for updates on that, progress of that adoption goal in the future. We'll do <clears throat> what we always do for every parent who unfortunately has to have their rights terminated, which is to pass along not only a copy of the order, but the advice of rights, as well as the documentation outlining their appellate rights. <clears throat> Each parent has a right to appeal within 21 days. And we'll need a copy of that order to do so, so we'll be forwarding that uh, by mail as well as by email to make sure that they have the opportunity to do that if they so choose to exercise that right. <clears throat> Our next review will be uh, held under the uh, adoption code as the child will be committed to the Department for Permanency for Aid or for the uh, efforts towards the appropriate permanency planning goal of adoption or similar placement. And that post termination review here and will be on 511 of 23 and 11 8. Unless there's any questions, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. What day was that, Your Honor? Was May 11th? Yeah, 11.